Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. So I recently reviewed Stoner by John Williams and if you have seen that review you will know that I thought it was an absolute masterpiece. It is without a doubt one of the best books I have ever read. I was so enthralled by it that a couple of days later I decided to read it again or should I say listen to it because I decided to give it a go on audiobook and it does still stand up. However, the audiobook experience was not the best. It was nowhere near as good as my reading experience and this is mainly because the narrator was English, had an English accent which I thought for a book that is so American was a very odd choice. I digress. A lot of the comments on my review of Stoner mentioned that Butcher's Crossing is equally as fantastic. A few people even said they preferred it to Stoner and after like the fifth, sixth person mentioned this novel I decided to break my book buying ban. Um, I was really trying my hardest not to buy any more books to kind of read what I own and get through it all uh, but I broke my book buying ban because I was like Do you know what so many people have mentioned how good this novel is. I've just read Stoner. Stoner is easily one of the best novels I've ever read. I have to give this one a go as soon as possible. So what's this book about? Butcher's Crossing follows the journey of Will Andrews, a young Harvard dropout who is seeking adventure and meaning in a vast American wilderness. Determined to escape the confines of civilization, Will travels to the frontier town of Butcher's Crossing. He's searching for freedom, he's searching for excitement. In Butcher's Crossing, Will meets a colorful cast of characters. The main one of these is Miller, a buffalo hunter. Most of the residents of Butcher's Crossing are buffalo hunters and they all sell or work for a guy called McDonald who buys the pelts off of them. However, Miller, he likes to go things alone. Miller is pretty badass, everybody. He's mean, he's tough, but he knows exactly what he's doing. He is seen in the area as the best buffalo hunter. Desperate to go on an adventure, Will decides to employ Miller to take him on a hunt by funding an entire expedition. An expedition into the Colorado Rockies. So Will, Miller and a crew of two others head out on a perilous journey into the untamed wilderness. As the expedition progresses, Will is forced to confront the harsh realities of frontier life, including the brutal realities of hunting and survival. And trust me, this book is not afraid to press upon its readers the brutality of surviving in this kind of landscape. This book really goes there. Brett Easton Ellis wrote the introduction to this novel and in that introduction he mentions that this book paved the way for Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian. He almost goes as far as saying if it wasn't for this novel we wouldn't have Blood Meridian. Now if you imagine I don't think this book is as harsh as Blood Meridian uh, but mainly because there's not so much sort of like human brutality within it but it does have that kind of feel that raw horrid survival brutal feel to it. So yeah, as I'd say, not quite as, as harsh as Blood Meridian is or as brutal as Blood Meridian is. But if you know that kind of the vibe of that novel, then this has a similar sort of feel at times. However, I don't want to put you off with my comparison to Blood Meridian because within all of this brutality and survival on the hunt, there is amazing stretches of absolute beauty. The way that the landscape is brought to life, the way it is painted, oh, it is absolutely a uh, Amazing. This book is equal parts brutal and utterly beautiful. Will enters this hunt as a boy, but as each day passes, he is slowly but surely becoming a man. Grappling with questions of morality, identity and the true meaning of freedom. As tensions rise, the expedition takes a dark turn. And Will must confront the dark side of human nature and the consequences of his own actions. It's exploring timeless themes such as greed, ambition and the search for meaning in an ever-changing world. So there you go, that was the blurb, that's kind of what this book is about. Now I'm going to do a little comparison to the other John Williams novel, Stoner, just because that novel is also so fresh in my mind. Because on the surface it would appear that these two novels are vastly different. Butcher's Crossing is more action orientated and so visceral, while Stoner is a lot more introspective, focusing on the quieter moments of everyday life. But although I would say this novel isn't quite hitting the heights of Stoner, but it is very, very close, this book is casting a very similar sort of magic. Both novels have William's distinctive style and narrative voice. Both novels are exploring the inner lives of their protagonists, both delving into themes of personal struggle, self-discovery and the pursuit of meaning. Both stories are set against the backdrop of historical and cultural change, and both novels are capturing the complexities of human life with nuance and empathy. 
It is a bit of a stretch and perhaps a little bit simplistic to say imagine Stoner as a novel and throw it into the Wild West with a little bit of brutality and violence and that's what this novel is. But, you know, if you want to be simplistic, yeah, that kind of is what this novel is. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked? Well, of course, I have to start with John Williams' prose, which is absolutely stunning. Holy moly is his prose my cup of tea. It's engaging, it's immersive, and oh my god, it transports you right into the kind of rugged wilderness of the Wild West. His writing just evokes an incredible sense of place. Yeah, just magnificent. The pacing is also really, really good. Like, Williams keeps the story building and building and building, but then takes these sort of choice moments to slow things down. These almost quiet moments of introspection between the action. Now, I know a little bit about the American West, and that is mainly because of how many Westerns I have watched throughout my life, be it TV shows or movies, or also how many Western novels I have read. But of course, that is all fiction, so I have absolutely no idea if the things I have watched in the past have any kind of historical accuracy. But I will say that this novel is filled with these small little historical details that made it feel really authentic. So I can't say with any level of accuracy whether this book is really accurate to what it was like at that time, but it really feels it. There's something about how harsh and raw this novel is that makes me feel like it is quite accurate. It's not holding things back. These were not good times to live through. These were not times we should be romanticising. They were brutal times. And yeah, and this novel does a good job of putting that across to the reader. And although it's a really simple story, I absolutely loved this novel for its simplicity. There was something about Stoner as well that was very, very simple. But there is something in that simplicity that enables your mind to just wander and think and ruminate and uh, combined with William's amazing prose, yeah, I just thought like the story was brilliant and it's really like tense and suspenseful at times. There are certain moments in this book where I was on the edge of my seat. I also really love the ending of this book. Now I'm not gonna say anything in detail for spoilers, but it was it has a real sort of satisfactory ending whilst also leaving things open-ended enough for you to kind of contemplate where things might go. Yeah, William's just nailed it with the pacing, the story, the tone, just everything is <laughs> really good. What didn't I like? Just like Stoner, there isn't anything in Butcher's Crossing that I didn't like. However, there are a couple of things that I think readers might not like, and I will mention them just so you know. If you don't enjoy reading about animal cruelty, then this is not, and I can't stress that enough, this is not the book for you. It goes into graphic detail of the hunting process. And yeah, if you yeah, if you just don't like cruelty to animals in any way whatsoever, you have to steer clear of this one. And my final note to you would be, and something that you might not like about this novel, is that some of the characters do feel a little bit stereotypical, and that might come across as a little bit culturally insensitive. Um, it's not, not the book's not riddled with that, but there are just a few things that pop up here and there uh, that may put you off in that way. But that's it, and as I already mentioned, I didn't have any dislikes with this book. Uh, John Williams, I'm so happy to have discovered him so recently. He truly was absolutely incredible. And of course, it's no surprise that I'm going to be giving this novel five stars out of five. It will also be joining Stoner in my best reads of the year list. I just can't imagine anything knocking Stoner off, and I can't imagine anything knocking this out of, like, the top ten in that sense. Just both of them, both of them are amazing, fantastic reads, and I can't recommend them enough. So have you read Butcher's Crossing? And if you have, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. As always, I hope you're well and you're enjoying whatever you might be reading. Uh, please let me know what you are currently reading in the comments. And yeah, I hope you're well and I'll see you on the next one.